Hello there, my lovely, lovely audience. This is What If Deku Was. So, I don't know how to describe this, but give me a moment. Sorry about that. In any way, this is a redo of What If Deku Was Insane. And. That's just why, though, you're probably asking. Just so you know, it's pretty late at night when I'm recording this, so that's why I seem out of breath. And if you're wondering why I'm doing a redo of it, I just didn't like where it was going. And if you know Pokemon, you know this is a cough of grief. And why am I doing this? And if I'm doing a Pokemon, what if? Why don't I make Deku evolve in from a your mask into a Carpocrigus? Because I don't like it that aspect of Pokemon what if own evolution but but let's just get into it. So we're cutting to when Inko's giving birth. And um yeah a coffin comes out. Like, a small coffin comes out with two holes on each side of it. And one giant hole where the face would be. The doctors are confused. Inko is confused. Hasashi is confused. As they just hear laughter coming from it. As all of a sudden... That face you're seeing right there, the one with the red and yellow eyes, giant smile, pops out. Like, it doesn't just appear by the face. It literally extends out of the area where his face is, still laughing, as he proceeds. As the holes that I mentioned earlier, you see these hands coming out? Yeah, those come out. And you know what they do? Almost immediately after birth, he wraps his arms around one of the doctors, squeezing him, takes one hand, touches his face, and all of a sudden, the doctor has his face removed, turned into a mask, and then, as Deku opens up his coffin, whatever is inside of that comes out, you know, a lot more hands come out, drag the dead body of the doctor in, and then Deku, you know that silver bit on the forehead of the guy? Oh, give me a moment. And then, in any way, yeah, the silver bit. Deku puts the mask where the silver bit is, and all of a sudden he shapeshifts into the man. Still laughing throughout this entire situation, he chokes his co, his former co-worker, only to um, have someone with a light quark come in and burn the mask off, and you know, use it and. Deku's weakness in this is going to be light, like a lot of it. So anyway, Deku, still a tiny coffin. All of his limbs are subtracted along with his face, and uh, the coffin falls back onto the ground. The mask is still on his forehead. He just turned back into a coffin when the bright light appeared. They take the mask and are very, very scared, shocked, and confused. One of the doctors, after seeing that, wants to get their friend back. So, you know what he does? He opens up the coffin and sees a black void as a bunch of more hands, all with Egyptian sh symbols on them. That's a detail that I left out when the guy was being kidnapped. Yeah, all of his hands have Egyptian symbols on them. 
grabs him and pulls him in as well. As all of a sudden Deku's size would proceed to increase by 1%. As did when he consumed the other guy. I just forgot to mention it. And, uh... Tenko really doesn't want this thing, neither does Itachi, but they legally have to. Like, a person called the heroes, and, um... Inko and Hasashi are legally inclined to keep this thing. So they just take it home and put it in a glass case in a dark room. Which you should never do with this abomination. As Deku, knowing that it's very, very dark, would come out of his coffin. And a shadow monster with that face, and those symbols, and four hands, would pop out of the coffin with a bit of mommy wrap on him. You know, looking like it's holding him together from being just a shapeless blob. His arms don't have it. And his head. Just his body. Give me a moment. Let's just get back into it. I had something I needed to do. As Deku would come out of his coffin, still smiling, he would go out the put his coffin on his back, and go out the window, and, um... Eh, situation. As Deku would proceed to do a lot more of his patented kidnapping, killing, and identity stealing. Yep. Kidnapping, killing, and identity stealing. Because they don't know whether he kidnaps people or steals or kills them when he throws them into the void. And they don't even know what happens to the person after they lose their face. So, um, yeah. It would proceed to go out, do more of that, the next morning, Inka would see him still in his case, he would have gone in his case, and, um, this would continue for the past four years, as they finally decided to try and talk to Deku. You know, try and get him in a school, enroll him. Here's how this conversation went. Uh, hello, bro. Hello, Oh, you know how to speak. <laughs> yes, I do. And if you don't waste my time, I will kill. Not that well, apparently. Um, hi, I would just like to, um, how do I talk to you? I will rip your face off if you do not continue. Man, this voice is killing me. Okay, let's just get to the point. I am going to enroll you into school. Did I say four years? I meant to say three. I meant to say three, by the way into a school. Why? Mainly because we'll have a good reason t for you not to be in our house. Because we're scared. Most of the time. So whether you like it or not, we're gonna take a big bright flashlight, shine it on you, and drag you to the school. As Deku's face would do the same thing it did when the doctor he kidnapped or killed, don't know what happens in there, would extend out along with arms aimed directly at Ingo. And as Hazashi would come in with a big ass light, 
and shine. I'm just going to end it here. See you all, my lovely audience. Why? I, I can't upload anything over this, like, 13 minutes, or it won't upload, so. It's going to stay short. It's 10 minutes long. See you all next time.